I'm Karen Farnsworth of Wildflower Quilting and this video is to show how I load my quilts using a stapler. So the first thing I want to show you is one of the reasons that I really love using a stapler to load quilts. This quilt is all finished. I did load it using the stapler and now I'm ready to take it off the frame and it's this fast and easy. All I need is my good pair of scissors. Start a cut on this backing. Now all I have to do is pull the strip of fabric off of my leader. All of the staples will stay in the fabric. As I pull it off of my canvas leader, and my strip of fabric with the staples in it is ready to just be thrown away. Here it is again from the top of the quilt. That just goes in the trash. Now that you've seen how fast it is to take a quilt off of the frame, I want to show you how fast it is to load your quilt using the stapling method. So I have a backing here ready to go on. This is a big backing. It's about 96 by 110. So good size quilt. And when I staple my backings on, I don't find centers. I don't worry about the center. I let the quilt backing show me where it's supposed to go. I just make sure I'm in the middle of my frame roughly. The stapler I like to use is this swing line. It's a model number 48201. I don't know if you can still get these kind of staplers, but any stapler will do. I like this one because it is cordless, rechargeable, and it's automatic. I don't have to squeeze it. I'm working with the bottom of my quilt backing and I find the rough center and put the right side of the backing to the right side of my canvas leader and take a staple. I want to make sure that the head of my staple is on the fabric side so that when I pull my quilt off the staples will stay in the fabric and not in my canvas. Then I just pinch these together and put a staple in every three or four inches. Now you can see that my leaders have some wear from the staples, but this is almost 10 years worth of stapling to these leaders and I feel like it's well worth it to replace my leaders every decade or so to be able to staple my quilt backings on and do it much, much faster than any other method I've ever tried. Staple from the center down one side and then from the center to the other side. Now I've been doing this a long time so it comes pretty natural to me. It does take a little bit of getting used to to be able to hold the fabric and canvas and the stapler and make it work. But if you're having trouble you can always put your canvas up on your roller like this so it's more like on a tabletop and do your stapling from there. But I find this really fast and easy just to be able to slide that stapler along. Quilt and put this quilt on really fast. Now I have the bottom of my quilt backing attached or stapled to my top leader. Now the reason I attached it to my top leader is because I use the top and the backing leaders interchangeably for putting my backings on. Because I float my quilt tops, I don't attach those quilt tops to any leaders. So I can use either of my front leaders to attach my backings. So now I'm going to roll my backing onto my leader, my front roller, and I let the quilt backing show me where it needs to go. Because I have not found my centers, I'm not finding the center on my pickup roller either. I just start rolling this backing and make sure that it rolls straight without 
rolls or creases or pleats. And the quilt will show me, the backing will show me if it's getting skewed to one side or another. You can see that there's a little bit of a ripple. You can see that the quilt has been, it's a little bit strained because it's pulling too far this direction. So I know I need to center it just a little bit better. That's how that backing shows me where it needs to go. And I just let the friction or the drag from coming over the pickup roller be the gauge of my tension as it rolls onto my top leader. This is a big backing, I mentioned that. So it takes a minute. Make sure it's all good and straight and smooth. Now when I get close to being at the top of my backing, I need to start watching where it's hanging in relation to my pickup canvas. Now we're looking under the pickup roller at the top of the backing coming over the pickup roller and I'm watching the relationship between this backing and I'm waiting for it to meet up with the edge of the canvas on the top roller because I did not take the time to square this backing. I don't need to. All I need to do is watch for the first part of that backing to reach and get level with the canvas. So if this backing doesn't happen to be square, which this one isn't because it was a pieced backing, and in the middle of the backing there's a section that is tighter and shorter than the rest, I can just roll my backing until that section matches the bottom of my canvas leader for my pickup roller. This quilt backing wasn't square. Because it's pieced, the center of the backing is shorter than the two sides. So I did not square up this quilt backing before I loaded it. I did make sure that the bottom of the backing was straight so that I could staple it onto my leader. And then I rolled the backing on, and as soon as the first part of the quilt backing at the top of the quilt backing came even with my canvas leader for my pickup roller, I stopped rolling. So it's even here, but on the ends, both ends, there's about an inch of extra fabric, an inch of dog ears. Now I didn't take the time to square it up before I started. That takes too much time. That's not my job. The customer should do that. This quilt backing wasn't square. Because it was pieced, the center is shorter than the two ends. The two ends have about an extra inch, inch and a half of fabric. When I loaded this quilt backing, I made sure that the bottom of the backing was straight and even so that I could staple it onto my canvas leader down there. But when I rolled it onto the frame, as soon as the edge, the first edge came even with my canvas pickup roller, I stopped rolling. So you can see it's even right here in the center of my backing, but on either side there's an extra inch, inch and a half that's hanging down below my canvas. That's okay. I didn't take the time before putting it on the frame to square it up because that's too much time. And this method is really fast and easy. Now all I need to do is staple it straight and square, and as I come down to where the fabric is hanging below my canvas, I just fold it up and staple it on. So I might have a fold up an inch, two inches, it depends on how untrue or unsquare that backing was.
pretty fast. And then I go the other direction, same method. And just like that, we've loaded a king size quilt backing using the stapling method. Even though this quilt backing wasn't square, it didn't really take me any extra time at all using my method. Now I do make sure that my customers understand they're going to lose an inch of quilt backing at the top and bottom of their backing. And just like that, we've loaded a king size quilt backing. I love this method because it is so fast and so easy. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.